All right, um, this is not going to be a video about please don't buy Chinese op amps because they're all garbage, which is true. <laughs> is The video is, if you have a bag of garbage Chinese op amps, can you do anything with them, okay? Is there some way to salvage these things in some circuits, right? Do they do some things okay, right? And so that's what we're going to try to do today. So I have 50, 50 op amps here. And um, don't think you can just judge op amps by their pricing because, you know, these parts on DigiKey, if you buy a reel of 3,000 parts, you get these for a dime each, right? So if you're a big company, you're paying 10 cents each for these. And well, if you go onto eBay and you buy fake ones, guess what? You're paying 10 cents each. So they should be the real deal. Assuming that somebody had bought a reel of 10,000 and then they piece them out 50 at a time or they just have them left over and leftover parts should not ever get retail pricing, right? They should be less than retail. But anyway, uh, I've talked about that before. Anyway, I've got 50 Chinese op amps. They're marked TL072s. They are not TL072s. <laughs> All right, so let's, uh, I'm gonna use my board here. If, if you're not familiar with my board, you can get it on uh, PCB Way. I'll put a link down below. Um, it allows you to hook up two op amps and compare them. That's why I designed this board. You have one op amp in this circuit, one op amp in this circuit, and then you can compare if they look the same or they look different. There's one non-inverting amplifier and one inverting amplifier. So each is a dual op amp, right? So half of this chip does the non-inverting, half of this chip does the inverting, and the same over here. I've wired this board so I have one in, four out. So I have one input, but it goes to all four circuits. And so we can we can look at those look at those four circuits. So let's go up to the top here, and we'll put a scope probe on uh, this part. And you can see it is a some type of amplifier. It's a times ten amplifier. So I'm putting in one volt, and I'm getting um, what am I getting out about plus or minus. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, about plus or minus 10 volts out. Yeah, so it's doing its thing. And then this is the non-inverting one, and it's, it's out of phase, as it should be. And um, I'm using 1Ks and 10Ks, so it's going to have a little, it should be a 9K and a 1K if you wanted to times 10, but it's a 10K and a 1K, so it's going to be a little bit less. So anyway, there you go. So that's what a good op amp does, okay? And so here is the uh, good op amp, and here's my Chinese op amp. Okay, so let me uh, let me move this one up a little bit so we can look at the two. So the, the bad op amp's got these got these wigglies on him, right? That's the inverting one. Here's the non-inverting one. It's got wigglies on it. So yeah, wiggle, wiggle, and uh, the uh, uh, wiggly is not a good thing. You do not want wiggles on your signal. All right, so. Uh, Change in the power supply voltages don't change anything at all. I've done that. Um, loading the output does change things. So if I load the output with a 1K resistor, let's uh, let's get rid of this one. We'll put this one up here. I'll put this one down here. So now we're looking at the the yellow trace is the bad inverting, and the blue trace is the bad non-inverting. If I load down the inverting with a 1K resistor, you can see I can change that crossover distortion or whatever it is. I can I can move it. And if I do the same thing to the uh, inverting amplifier, you can see that I can move it also. So loading it down a little does move it. Um, putting a capacitor on the output doesn't help. You can load it way down where it stops working and then maybe it <laughs> acts a little better. Let's see here. Here's a here's a 500 ohm resistor. Yeah, it, it, uh, it's, it's not working. Okay. So the only thing that I've found that maybe is somewhat useful is to lower the input. So Amplitude. So if I lower the input amplitude right now, that started out at one volt. 
And let me lower it down, 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 lower it down. Lower it down. You can see that the crossover distortion is at a fixed voltage. And if I finally get my signal down low enough, or I can avoid that section, it happens that it's about 225 millivolts. So at 225 millivolts, let me move this up even a little farther. At 225 millivolts, it's acting like an op amp. <laughs> How about that? Um, so, uh, will it work with every kind of waveform? Works with square wave, sine wave. Uh, let's do a sync pulse. Oh, that doesn't look right. Oh, that doesn't look right at all. Hmm. Hmm. Let me do an ECG. Oh, that looks all right. Let me, uh, move these up a little bit. Let me lower this one down. That one's okay. Let's go back to that sync pulse. Why is that sync pulse so weird? Let's zoom in on that. Oh, it's got distortion on him. Yeah, it's got distortion on the output. Oh dear. So even at 225 millivolts, I'm still getting a bad signal. Um, so this should be a symmetric waveform. Let me show you what that's supposed to look like. Uh, it's supposed to look like that. Okay. And uh, it's a look and look at that. Um, Wow, and it's losing a bunch of amplitude as well because we're at the same number of divisions for the two. Let me, let me validate that. Let me, yeah, see, I moved my scope probe over. Uh, if you can see what I'm doing down here. Uh, so I'm looking at the good op amp with both scope probes, right? And everything looks great. And if I take this and I put it over to the bad op amp, so we have good on the bottom, bad on the top. And yeah, not only is it weird on the right side, it doesn't even reach the full peak. So let's see if we can lower the amplitude to make that one even look okay. Oh dear, I don't think we can. Yeah, we can't. So even at very, very low very, very low signal levels. It's still messing up. So I don't think there's any use for these op amps. Uh, comment below. <laughs> I don't. I don't think you can. I don't think you can use these op amps for anything. All right. Let's lower the frequency. Maybe that's it. One kilohertz. Ooh, is it looking better now? Oh, okay. It's looking better now. One kilohertz, maybe. Let's up our voltage here and our voltage here. Oh, there we go. Look at that. So now we can go back to our amplitude. And oops, now we're now I've scaled it too far. Wow. Okay, it's a frequency thing. Um, so let's change the frequency. And I'll go up to, oh yeah, it's starting to show already. Right about, oops, shoot. Right about, mm, yeah, right about 1.4 kilohertz. So, now we can go up in amplitude again. Oh, we're at 220, 223 millivolts, so we're okay. So if you're below, yeah, if I go bigger, it's going gonna, it's gonna to crap out again. Yeah, it craps out again. <laughs> Spectacularly crapped out. Uh, 225 millivolts. Yeah. So if you limit your circuits to less than one and a half kilohertz, and you limit your voltage to 225 millivolts, then maybe it does something, I guess. So, wow. 
when would I be able to use these? I guess sometime. I mean, there are situations where that's what you got. Oh well, I thought I could find some use for these things. Um, but I can't. <laughs>